Hello and welcome to On My Bookshelf. And in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at Sam Gregory's Mesozoic. I expect a lot of you are familiar with Sam Gregory, but for those of you who are not, he is a landscape and fine art photographer from Dorset. He is also the co-host of the very popular photography podcast, The Togcast. This is actually one of my favourite shows, so if you haven't checked it out before, I'll include a link for that in the video description below. Now, the book actually contains images that Sam has captured along the Dorset coast, but if you're expecting images of Dirtle Door, you're in for a big surprise. Let's talk about the book, but I actually want to talk about the book packaging. This is because Sam was keen to point out that the materials that he used to package a book both come from sustainable sources and is also recyclable as well. So I think that's a really nice touch. The book itself is square format, soft cover, 21 centimeters by 21 centimeters. It's 48 pages and contains 30 photographs. Sam describes the book as a visual abstraction of the Mesozoic period, which sits between two mass extinction events uh, 252 million years ago and 66 million years ago. Uh, let's take a look at the content of the book. There are five sections in the book and each one talks about a different period within that Mesozoic time frame. It's really interesting to see how Sam has laid these sections out. So for example, if you look at the first section, it talks about that very early period after that big mass extinction event and he talks about words like chaos and it gives a real sense of uh, the kind of turbulent era that the planet was in at that point. And then if you look on the opposite page you'll see a th the thumbnail of all six images that you'll see for that section and clearly there you can see straight away that the those pictures aren't just a random collection of images. There's a very distinct theme that matches that particular section. So if, uh, for this one you know, it uses the word chaos so there's lots of dark imagery there and they, the, those images do reflect that sense of sense of chaos that the earth is going through some sort of rebirth. And it's really pleasing to see that each of the subsequent sections follow that similar format where you get that textual description and the thumbnails um, that show you the, 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 the theme of that, that particular section. In section two, Sam starts to talk about fresh beginnings, and this is the advent of big deserts and sandy rivers. And this is clearly represented in the six images that he's chosen to go in this section. They've got a very strong color palette, which helped represent the sand. And he also talks about flow as well. And this is where he's used the water as it flows through each of the, the pictures and they create different shapes and textures. And it's really interesting because you start to use your imagination to, to see things in these photographs that might not necessarily be intentional, like this image here, which I think is like a wave crashing. So it's very these images are very representative of the theme um, that Sam has got for section two. In section three, we move away from sand and dust and move towards rocks, structure and formation. And I think the photographs in this section are some of my favorites. I think I can really appreciate the skill that Sam has had uh, to create these pictures. If you look at this one, for example, I really like the use of light on the underlying rock, gives it some real texture. And then you've got this, this water, I think it is, it, as it fans out from the bottom corner out into the rest of the image, a really skillful uh, composition and probably quite difficult to execute. In section four, we start looking more at the geology and rock formations around the Jurassic coast, which of course is famous for finding fossils of the animals that used to inhabit the planet around that period of time. And Sam has done a really skillful job there of picking out patterns, shapes, textures, and colors to make some really striking photographs. And in some instances, again, like, like some of the, the previous images, if you look at them with a slightly different eye, I can almost imagine some of these pictures being uh, looking like the surface of a planet, for example. Section five, the final section sees the end of the Mesozoic era where the planet is hit by another cataclysmic event throwing it back into the realms of chaos. And this is of course reflected in Sam's pictures, both in terms of the gray, dark color palette, but also the style, the very abstract nature of these pictures. A really nice way to, to finish the, the, the book, I guess. And, and it, feel, it definitely feels like I've been taken on a journey through five distinct periods throughout that Mesozoic era. 
Okay, let me share with you my thoughts on this book. Now, when I bought this book, I already kind of had a really good idea of the types of photograph that were going to be in it. And there are nothing like the type of pictures that I would normally take. But that's the very reason I did buy this book. I think it's really important um, as my development as a photographer to uh, you know, expand my knowledge, expand my uh, visual library of the pictures that I look at. And I thought Sam's book was an excellent opportunity to look at something very different from maybe the classical view uh, landscape images that I take. Because even though I might not take those types of images myself, they can, they can still help inspire and influence my own work. But for that reason, because they were very different images from what I'm used to taking myself, I found it quite a difficult one to, to talk about because I think I, I lack the, uh, the language in which to really effectively describe these images. And that's why, even though you can actually see all the photographs from this book on Sam's uh, Instagram uh, site, I think you have to be able to view them in print for me. And as you know, I'm a big fan of the printed form of printing my own images and, and of books in general. But this is a really good example of actually being able to look at a picture in print really gives it more meaning and more value. So for that reason, I'm absolutely delighted that I got this book on my bookshelf. And I think even if you may not think it's a, a book that uh, represents pictures that you might take, I still think it's a valuable one to have in your bookshelf as well. So if you want to get a copy of Sam's book, there are only a limited run and he is running out. So um, time is limited, but I'll include a link where you can buy the book direct from Sam in the video description below. So please do head over there and support Sam and this uh, really good project and book that he's uh, managed to deliver. Okay, that's just about it for me. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode of On My Bookshelf. And if you want to see another episode of On My Bookshelf, I'll pop a playlist up there of all the previous episodes that I've done. Maybe there'll be something in there that will inspire you to put a new book on your bookshelf. And of course, do check out one of my regular photography videos as well. And if you want to see more content from me, please do also consider hitting that subscribe button just up there in the corner. Uh, but other than that, I shall see you in the next one.